Welcome to Sergey's Chemistry. Today we're looking at nickel-2 ion tests. Here you can see nickel-2 sulfate crystals. Green solid, well soluble in water. As many transition metals, it forms soluble complexes with ammonia, which has a blue-violet color, a little bit similar to copper-2 complex with ammonia. Nothing very special. What about Hydroxide. Nickel 2 hydroxide is pale, pale green. A little bit similar to iron 2 hydroxide, again, nothing special. Is there a magic bullet which works for nickel and nickel only? Yes, it exists. It's dimethylglyoxin. So let's run dimethylglyoxin test. As my control, I use iron 2 sulfate, which is also green, green solution and uh, uh, nickel-2 sulfate as a substance which is supposed to give positive result. Dimethylglyoxin is white organic solid which is soluble in alcohols. So here I use a solution of dimethylglyoxin in propantol, about 2 grams in 125 grams of propantol. No visible change in case of iron 2, what about nickel? Nickel 2 solution changes from green solution into raspberry red or bright red precipitate. How dimethylglyoxin managed to do this trick? Let's look at its molecule. Nitrogens have lone pairs which can be donated to nickel 2 ions and OH groups opposing each other on dimethylglyoxide molecules, if they lose one proton, would form very strong hydrogen bonds. Overall, it's neutral complex. This happens only in neutral or alkaline conditions. Make sure your conditions are never acidic. This test wouldn't work otherwise. Let's run it on microscale. dimethylglyoxin solution and propantol and characteristic red precipitate. You can see the crystals of red complex. What can be done with nickel-2 hydroxide? If you oxidize it with bromine, it would give very characteristic black precipitate. Let's look at this test now. Again, I take the same pair of substances, iron 2 sulfate and nickel 2 sulfate. I really need very low concentrations, they were, were added distilled water. Now, sodium hydroxide makes precipitate of insoluble iron 2 hydroxide, which is characteristically green. Okay, that's what we expect. With nickel-2, hardly anything is visible. The solution starts looking a little bit opaque. Maybe we see something if you shake. Not over white background, but over dark background, you can see pale, pale green precipitate flakes. Addition of bromine water is the final punch here. Bromine is oxidizing agent. It would oxidize iron-2 into iron-3 and nickel-2 into nickel-3. Uh, iron-2 green changes into iron-3, so making brown precipitate. What about nickel-2? That's nice black precipitate of nickel-3 hydroxide is formed on addition of bromine water. So from pale, pale green precipitate to black precipitate. That's our characteristic test. Let's run it on the microscale. Again, I need low concentration for this to work. Nickel-2 hydroxide precipitate, hardly visible which we can develop very well with bromine water.
black precipitate formation confirms presence of nickel 2. Equation above tells us essentially what's going on. Bromine molecules oxidize nickel 2 ions into nickel 3. Themselves are changing from bromine molecules to bromide ions. Let's run these two tests in fast sequence again, without any control. Here low concentration of nickel for sodium hydroxide bromine water test and high concentration of nickel for dimethyl glyxime test. Addition of sodium hydroxide, formation of hardly visible precipitate and bromine water develops it into very distinct black precipitate of nickel 3 hydroxide. Dimethyl glyxime solution added to nickel 2 sulfate solution makes characteristic raspberry red or bright red precipitate. That's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye.